Happy Open Education Week, everybody. We are <laughs> in our final session um, of our Tour de Force of OER Degree and Adoption Showcases. And I'm very pleased to have Sarah Prophet and James Boldman um, from Ivy Tech Community College. I wanted to mention to you, for those of you who aren't familiar, that Ivy Tech Community College is the community college system in Indiana. It encompasses 30 campuses. And we're, um, we're very pleased to hear about the OER degree work that they have been doing and um, the savings that they have been providing for their students. Sarah, go right ahead. Thanks, Una. Um, so yes, this is Sarah Prophet. Um, actually, my title did recently change. So um, my title is Director of Instructional Design Services at the college. So um, basically, uh, as you'll see here in a minute, I do wear quite a few hats. Um, my main hat is uh, leading the instructional design team. Um, and we work for a statewide system. So I'll explain a little bit more about that here in a minute. Um, but the hat that I'm most proud to wear is the OER hat. Um, and so I kind of lead the charge for our OER initiative at the college and try to um, move things along and, and get folks um, rallied around certain initiatives to move forward. Um, and so, so I'm kind of the cheerleader um, for, for the efforts at Ivy Tech, but I have a lot of folks behind me that are um, invaluable to the work that we do. Um, and one of one of those folks is here. I actually think I have more than one actually in the meeting today. Um, but James is here to present with me today. James Boldman is um, an associate professor and program chair of communication and foreign language. Um, so he's going to talk a little bit about his experience from a faculty perspective, um, which I don't have that perspective. So I wanted to make sure that somebody who's actually taught with our OER material and has developed our OER material could share with you today um, his perspective. So uh, we will do a little bit of that today and I will do my best to keep it brief. I just have a few slides um, and then I'll take you into more of the meat of the presentation. So to explain the statewide system, um, as Una mentioned, we do have um, a multitude of campuses. We're actually restructuring. So um, the, the number is still a little bit murky, but we're now dividing our um, all of our campuses into not just campuses, but sites. Um, and then those campuses are, are kind of identified by size and the, the amount of services they offer. So I won't get into all of that because again, we are in the middle of a restructure. So um, I'm still trying to understand it myself. Um, but our statewide system, basically what that means is um, we have each campus um, has their own kind of what we would call campus level courses. Some of those are online courses that were grandfathered in before the statewide model. Um, but any new online courses that we offer do go through the statewide model, which means that um, my team of instructional designers will hire a subject matter expert to build the content. They build that in a master course. Um, we use Canvas um, as our LMS, so they'll build that in Canvas. And then uh, we will share that out to the commons and faculty can download that content into their section. So we have that kind of top-down um, approach in terms of the statewide courses. The OER courses, um, they do exist in a similar model. Um, we, we work with our curriculum committees to identify um, some reviewers on our content, which is important to, to our process as we're building OER. Um, and what we do with that is, is we've identified, and I'm gonna talk about this on the next slide, but we've identified some pathways to target to build out those OER materials. And what we do from there is, um, again, as I mentioned earlier, we have the folks from our curriculum committees. Those folks are all program chairs that make um, the curricular decisions at the college for each of their program areas. So we tap the curriculum committee members to serve as either developers or reviewers for the OER content as it's being built. Um, we, again, we look at those specific pathways to build out um, our OER material. And then once it's completed, we add those materials to our Follett book list. Um, so Follett is, is our partner in terms of textbook adoptions um, and, and getting those materials for students, listed for students on their website. So Follett lists our OER materials as green source. Um, so that's kind of our, our tag for what OER is at the college of green source. So those books are listed 
on the on the uh, follow-up book list and the reason why we do that is so that any faculty member teaching in a traditional or a hybrid modality can choose to adopt those materials into their section by using the OMSS which stands for open material selection fee attribute in our banner system so what that does is the OMSS attribute will then add a course fee um, to to that course which will be charged to each student. Right now that fee is $10 that the student will pay with their tuition and fees. And that um, will essentially give them everything they need on day one, all of their content um, in their course is ready to go. Um, we partner with Lumen Learning for our OER initiative. So um, we use, currently we're using the Candela system um, to get the, those materials prepared and, and into our courses in Canvas. So once that student pays their fee, they have all their materials on day one, um, which is excellent. Um, and so where this kind of started, um, so let me get into a little bit of the history of, of, of what we've done with our initiative. Um, back in 2012 was when the first conversation about OER started, and that was with my colleague, Adam Vorderstrass, who's no longer with us, um, is at BYU-Idaho now. Um, we, we definitely miss him, but he was the um, kind of founder of the OER initiative at the college. So he had a conversation with the developer um, and with the curriculum committee of the Political Science 101 course, the Introduction to American Government and Politics. That developer had a concern about textbook costs. And so OER was something that was looked at. Um, unfortunately, we used OER that was just kind of out there, um, open to anyone. We didn't, we weren't partnering with Lumen yet at that time. Um, what happened was the owner of that content took it down and we had to uh, kind of go back to the drawing board because we lost all of our content uh, in the middle of the semester. So that was, um, uh, you know, not a fun experience, but we learned the hard way that we definitely needed to get a, a, a stable um, partner for OER. So that's where Lumen came in. Um, and we started with our student success courses um, with money from Illumina grant, and we tapped um, the student success courses first. Um, those are a series of six courses uh, based on program. So student success in business, student success in healthcare. So students will take one of those student success courses um, depending on what their major is or what their programmatic um, focus is. So we, we honed in on the student success courses with that Lumina grant money um, to kind of get us started. Lumen came out and did a workshop. Our faculty were able to get up to speed. Um, and we were able to identify from there after the student success courses had materials built. Then we were able to identify the business um, TSAP was a, one of our pathways that we wanted to focus on getting all of those courses built out with an OER option. And then the um, transfer gen ed core was our other pathway we wanted to focus on. And we are still working on both of those pathways today. We have not completed um, the entire pathway yet, but we are getting very close to that. Um, and I'll talk about specific courses um, in just a minute after I, after I explain this, this next item here. So um, with the group of faculty that were um, identified to help out with the initial um, OER development, we were able to form an OER cross-discipline team. So this team of faculty, program chairs, um, staff, um, all came together and um, we kind of represent different programs. They represent different campuses, so different areas of the state, um, because we really had to build this up from a grassroots type effort. Um, this wasn't something that we started in policy. We actually worked the opposite way um, from the ground up instead of starting up at the top with policy. And I'll talk more about that in a little bit as well. Um, so our OER cross-discipline team has been um, just a great resource to have in terms of getting the word out in being such a large system that Ivy Tech is. It can be very difficult to spread word about something, especially something as big as this. Um, so our cross-discipline team um, really do a lot of cheerleading as well, and they, they help to inform other faculty members. Um, and a lot of those folks are also our OER developers, which is, is, is awesome to have those folks on board. So that's really all I have in terms of PowerPoint. Um, I did want to share with you um, the, so basically the reason why I wanted to show this, um, and let me know if you don't see this, so hopefully it's sharing still, but I have an OER at Ivy Tech kind of handout Word document now that's showing on my screen. If you don't see that, please let me know. Um, I wanted to talk about this because um, this. Uh, we're not seeing that. Okay. No. okay. Sure. Let me see if I can. 
new share. Let's try that. Let me know if you are now seeing yes. um, an OER at IBM. Okay. We, we see so um, basically what happened was we were starting to really make a lot of headway with OER. We were getting bigger. Um, I had a meeting with the our new Ivy Tech president as of last year um, to kind of fill her in on where we were, were at with our initiative, where we were wanting to go. She was really excited about it. So I knew that we were going to be able to continue to grow. So this past um, the end of the fall, early spring, um, I had a few meetings with our curriculum committee. So those are the folks I mentioned from each of our program areas. There's a group of program chairs that represent each campus um, that form a committee in their programs. Um, and so those folks make all of our curricular decisions. They make textbook decisions and things like that. So I was able to meet with those folks um, earlier this, this term with the folks at Lumen. Um, and also with our follow-up partners about our OER initiative. And this was the handout that I shared with them. So I just kind of wanted to show you this from that perspective. Um, I know that everybody knows what OER is, so I'm not gonna go through that, but that's the reason why you see that here um, in our, our little handout here. We just kind of went through the basics of what is OER, what are the five R's, why are they important, um, and the purpose and, and kind of the, the rationale behind why we wanted to start this initiative at Ivy Tech. So obviously our, our main purpose is to dramatically reduce the cost of course materials. Obviously that's a huge one. So that $10 fee right now is, is the only cost that the student will have in terms of, of any, any course costs in an OER um, course that they take at the college. Um, so I've already talked about our cross-discipline team. And here we get into some more specifics about um, the actual courses that we've, we've built. So, um, You'll see here, I have a little table of each of the courses that we have existing materials built out for. There's a website here um, that Lumen put together for us that has our catalog of OER titles. So that's the link. I've actually sent that link out. Um, I've lost track um, here recently. I've had a lot of, of requests for that. Um, our faculty like to look through those materials, obviously, to vet them before they um, are ready to make a decision on adopting OER in their section or not. Um, so that, that link is, has been really helpful for us. Um, we also have ancillary materials that our developers build. So in our, our Canvas environment, um, our developers will put together a course shell. They'll add um, existing um, OER learning materials and um, sample assessments um, to include in the course. It is not a completely built out course that instructors receive whenever they adopt OER. Um, it is just that kind of group of assessments, sample assessments, sample learning materials, um, and then the links to the actual Lumen OER material um, are in that, that shell. And what happens is the faculty member will say, I want to have OER in my section, and then from um, my department, we load the content that's in that kind of uh, quote unquote master OER shell, load that content into the faculty member section, um, and then they're able to customize it from there, delete what they don't want, move things around and, and do whatever they need. So um, so that's kind of the process of how a faculty member would adopt the content. So the asterisks that you see next to some of these courses um, that are listed here, that signifies that that is an entire course. So we do have a few um, online courses that are built, that were built using OER materials. So the ones up, up on top that do not have an asterisk, those are just courses that are listed on our Follett book list that have an OER option, which means the online course is not using OER, but um, any instructor that's teaching a traditional course um, or a hybrid course could choose to um, use those materials and adopt those materials in their section. Um, and then the others that have the asterisk, those are statewide online courses that do use the OER material um, for, for the statewide um, online course. And then we have a few that are currently in development. Those are um, wrapping up later this spring and into the summer. We have a few that will go into the summer. Um, so our student success, there was one outlying student success course that never had an OER um, material actually completed. It was just, um, we had started the process and, and not completed it. So that one will wrap up 
Um, we have another math course that's being built out, science course, and uh, another business course. And again, that's following our business TSAT pathway and our transfer gen ed core pathway. Um, those are the reason why you see those, those courses listed. Um, so I talked about the OMSS fee here already, uh, or the attribute rather, that we use in Banner to designate our courses as OER. Um, and I also mentioned green source, so that shouldn't be news here. Um, this is our this is our big uh, topic here. So the cost savings. So just for the fall alone, um, we had 12,160 students using OER. Um, it says current fall because that was when I first sent out this handout. So I, I didn't update that language yet. Um, but when I shared this, it was in the fall. Um, and at the average price of $100 per textbook minus the $10 fee that we charge students, um, our savings were over a million dollars in one term, which we're super, super, super proud of. Um, that's huge for us. You can see on the graph that we have, we were steadily growing and then we just kind of took off in the fall, um, which was excellent. So again, our cross-discipline team has done an excellent job of getting the word out there um, and really selling um, the OER initiative at the college. So where we're gonna go from here, um, if I can scroll down here, our next step, um, our cross-discipline team meet, or our cross-discipline team, we meet on a monthly basis um, and talk through our strategies around OER um, and what we're doing there. We currently have um, a ticket in with our, our IR department to, to get data for um, an OER efficacy study that Lumen is working with Carnegie Mellon on. Um, so we are going to get data pulled and um, look at that efficacy study, which is going to be huge for us. Um, and that information will be shared at the State Board of Trustees meeting that we'll have in April. Um, so that'll be another a huge way for us to get the word out. Um, and then we're, we're again working on formalizing policy. And the reason why we're so behind on policy is because we have a group of folks that are uh, working on what we call Leadership Institute at Ivy Tech. And that group is going to be focused specifically on policy around OER. Um, and so that didn't kick off until later than we would have liked, so we're a little bit behind on policy, but that is definitely um, one of the big items on our list. Um, so what I'm going to do now is, um, James, I know I didn't leave you a ton of time, but if you no can problem. maybe just talk for your experience um, as an OER developer and faculty member, that would be great. Excellent. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, I am on our OER statewide uh, steering committee, as well as being an OER course reviewer. Uh, so I want to cover a little bit today of my story, of how I got involved in that, and then some of the tips and things I've, I've come across the way in terms of being a, an OER champion in our system. Uh, I started, the reason I got involved in this was uh, I was using a, a, in a, I teach a public speaking course and in the textbook I was using was like $155 and I only referred to it three or four times in the semester and I thought this was really, really silly. Uh, so I looked out and I found some uh, freeware online that I could use and because it made no sense to charge $155 for students to pay $155 for something I was only using very infrequently in a course. Uh, and the other frustration that I had was the lack of control when we were, we would partner and we have some great uh, publishing partners but every now and again we would have issues with our third-party content and we had no control over that and so students were looking at us and it had really nothing to do with us so between those two frustrating and it, those two um, those two things coming together we um, we started looking at OER, and so this is where I jumped into that. I, we have a lot of fun, and we have a lot of engagement with OER. It's great to see the student success. The student savings is phenomenal from a faculty perspective. Uh, the fact that they have access to materials from day one, we don't have to worry about whether financial aid came through or anything like that. That we have the academic freedom to change and modify and reuse items in a way that we want to do. Uh, one of the things that really struck home the, to this, for those who went to the Lumen Open Ed Conference this last year in Anaheim, and we had a very uh, large party that of, of, of us faculty who went, uh, was watching the student panel uh, that they had, I think, on the second or third day, uh, students talking about their experiences and taking OER courses, and it really, really struck a chord with us and really kind of helped to reinvigorate us as to why we're doing what it is that we're doing. Uh, so much so that we're actually turning around trying to replicate that student panel at our internal Ivy Tech uh, Student Summit because it was a very powerful um, uh, 
moment in, in that whole conference. Uh, I know for me, for example, I took away one of the, the students was talking about is to realize that as student, as, as professors, faculty, you, we are one of 200 that you may have over a course of semester. However, you're only one of us, one, only one to us. And that was uh, really powerful to hear. Uh, it's really a joy also on this committee and what I think makes this one of the strengths of this committee that we work on this OER cross disciplinary committee is the fact that we have everybody from multiple disciplines. Uh, so we get a broad perspective uh, and how we can approach things and cross departmental. So we have distance ed, uh, our accelerated program, faculty, all coming together and owning this project and working really well together. Um, so that's been a really great uh, experience so far. We have a couple of challenges. Um, part of it is, is that this is all parts, this is one part of our jobs. And so finding some time from time to time to be the advocate that we want to be can be somewhat of a challenge. Um, we, we constantly run into the challenge of understanding what OER is and what it isn't. Uh, a lot of faculty will talk about, well, I found this free uh, article online, and then when you investigate further, it's not true OER, uh, and in some cases, isn't even free. Uh, so educating them about what OER really is uh, can, be, can be kind of a challenge to us. Some of the, as, as we've gone across our campuses, some of and advocated for OER, some, some things that we've learned, and, and you probably have uh, experienced some of this already, but one, if you can have multiple champions on your campus. So for example, on my campus, um, not only am I the OER champion, but I share that with the librarian, uh, other OER faculty members, and our accelerated program uh, coordinator on our campus. It helps when it's just not one voice going out and from when you can do it from many different perspectives coming together, uh, I think faculty see some more value in that. Um, and appreciating that this may not be a fit for everyone, that not every course fits into OER um, and being open-minded to that in your discussions. Doesn't mean that we can't have ongoing discussions about this. Um, and the other one, I think this one is just from a learning as I've gone through and pitched to my fellow faculty. Uh, when you talk about academic freedom, uh, maybe tweaking the wording to less on creation, the ability to be able to create and more on flexibility. Um, a lot of uh, my colleagues are looking for something that they can adapt relatively quickly, quickly the fact given the fact that they are all very busy. Um, they want something that has the flexibility, and I have found that I have greater success when I'm talking about that, the flexibility that you can have versus what you can create. Um, and the other part is, is that have patience. This is a longer process. Take the long view that um, there will be some quick wins, but for the most part, uh, over time, you're going to have through multiple conversations, uh, it will take to, to start to sway the minds. And the other part is to keep, keep the fire lit, keep talking to your team, uh, attend the OER conferences such as this one, et cetera, the ones at Lumen. Uh, look for ways that you can, you can keep that fire going because there, there will be some struggles with it, but overall, it's a worthwhile and worthy cause. And we're, we're just so pleased that we can be able to do this and see the success that we do. Okay. Thank you, James, that was awesome. Um, I just want to mention one more thing. Um, I talked about the OMSF, the $10 fee that we have, but I didn't really explain why we do that. Um, maybe it's obvious, but I want to make sure that I'm clear about, um, because when we first started adding a fee to OER, we did get a lot of pushback about OER is supposed to be free and why are you um, charging for it? And we're, we're not really necessarily charging for the OER, we're charging for the future of OER. And so that $10 fee allows us to then offer professional development like James mentioned the um, open ed conference every year we're able to take a bigger group because we have the funds to do that and the ten dollar fee also helps fund future OER development so that we can continue to grow so that has been um, a huge part of our success and being able to build as quickly as we've been able to do is um, is mostly uh, due to that that fee that gives us the funding and then the the team of faculty across the state um, that have also helped us continue to grow. Well, thank you so much, uh, Sarah and James, for sharing with us this afternoon. I, um, 
wonderful presentation. And it was really wonderful, Sarah, that you invited James because um, although we had a couple of other faculty speakers earlier today, they weren't really speaking from the faculty perspective because they're both leading an OER program now um, at their colleges. So James, thank you for sharing um, the faculty perspective. That was really valuable. Um, we are open for questions um, and have just a couple of more minutes if, uh, if people have questions for Sarah or James. Well, I'm uh, gonna say thank you to uh, all of those people who joined us today, um, we still have 20 plus hardy participants who um, have been with us, uh, probably uh, many of you since early earlier today. Um, this has been a wonderful session and um, we've been recording all of these and so hopefully we'll have these posted um, for those who couldn't join us today. So thanks to, um, Sarah and James and all of our presenters today and those who came and um, engaged in the conversation around OER degrees and, and OER adoption. And this is Una Daly and I'm here with my assistant, Liz Yada from the Community College Consortium for OER. And we're gonna say one last time, happy Open Education Week. Um, and there's plenty of more activities on Thursday and Friday if you're interested, so check the calendar and good night everyone.